Hey friends, it's Jess with Virtually Visual. Uh, and if I sound different, it's because I'm actually sick. So I sound even lower and more crazy than I normally do. I'm kind of on the mend or on the brighter half of being sick. So I wanted to get this recorded today because I'm just in the mood right now. Today I'm gonna to be talking about something super exciting, which is braiding in Cinema 4D. If you've used the hair system before, you know that doing braids with hair is just pretty much impossible. And so I went down this long rabbit hole journey of actually creating my own script with ChatGPT because Cinema allows you to use scripts. And I was planning to make a whole braid generator, which I could still release this if people are interested. But basically, in this process of me creating a braid generator, I discovered that there's this free plugin called Reaper, and this already exists, and with this you can make both meshes using just the Reaper plugin, and you can also do spline versions with this SE version they've created, Reaper SE. So, for this particular video, if you're curious about doing this, I would download the SE one, but just in general, I would have both because it's just nice to have. And the reason I'm bringing this all up this plugin is because I just released a new hair pack on my Gumroad with five new styles, and these are much more intricate than my first pack, specifically these two braided styles that I have. And both of these utilize the Reaper plugin to actually create the braid portions. So I'm going to just show you quickly. This is one of the braided styles. Let me just exit out of the camera view here. So this is a simple braid with some bangs, and the way that this hairstyle was crafted is I have, you know, hairs for the different portions, like the scalp, the baby hairs, the bangs, and the braid itself. And so basically the way this works is you create a base spline that you wanna be placing your braid on. So I just have a very simple spline here, and if I go into point view, you can see that we actually just have um, we have only three points. So I have one point here at the base of the skull. I have another one here kind of at the neck and then I have one at the very end of where the braid will kind of be. And then for this, <clears throat> I actually plugged that spline into my reaper. So you put a spline wrap into your reaper and then you give it that placement spline we've just made. So I have a spline that I set up with the reaper. So I just, in my extensions, because this is a plugin, I just plugged, I opened up Reaper 3.2 SE, and then I put a spline wrap inside that, and I dragged my placement braid in there. So because I did that, it will put that braid along the spline guide that we created, this first braid placement spline. So I can hide that, and we'll just see the braid that's created with Reaper. So the other nice thing is that any spline object you make can be plugged into the hair objects and used as guides. So that's what I ended up doing with this braid hair. So if I re-enable that, and let's just go to the viewport, set this to guidelines. You can see in the guide section for linking, I actually have it set to our Reaper braid spline here. So Reaper can be used to create braids at any portion or anywhere you really want, honestly. And the way I made it actually follow the character, second, but you'll see that it has dynamics. And the way that that actually works is not with the dynamics in the hair. We don't actually need that there. The way I did that was actually by setting up the uh, placement spline, this single line here with only three points. I set the very last point to be set with the belt, rope belt on our character. So the character itself has a collider object. I'm not sure if you need that to use the rope belt, <clears throat> but I just set it to be following that character object. So in just that last point. So the rest of it just falls against the character. So let me just click off of here. You can see actually there's a little red and yellow line here with that first point. So when I hit play, you just got rope dynamics for that particular spline. And I do have the rope tag on here as well. So you need the rope belt and the rope tag. And this is just for where we're placing our braid. And then again, <clears throat> the Reaper object uses spline wrap on that guide we made, and it creates a braid that follows that. So because we're using spline wrap, and I've set up some different things in here, so like you can set it to keep the length, which is what I did here, or you could set it to fit spline for something longer. And I also set the up vectors for Y and Z a little bit so that it does not flip around in any weird spots. But because I'm doing that, then I can create this braided hair that follows the reaper, and it will then create a braid for me. So in the guides, I think I had 
I had high segments because it needs higher segments for these guides and it's still probably even not enough here but then I set them pretty high for the actual hairs and I only have three hairs for the count here and most of it comes into play with the clones but <clears throat> yeah it's kind of a weird setup for the hair object itself but the the reaper is really the main thing here that's that's creating this magical braid and then the hair materials themselves kind of set up the extra the work for us so like the thickness and some of the the stray hairs and all that goodness so looks a little funky and it's not perfect obviously i'd much prefer to have a full hair object that creates a braid but that's kind of the nice thing we get there with um using reaper and then again i have all these other hair objects in here so this is just one of the hairstyles that i put in my my new pack it's for five bucks you can download that and get all the hairstyles and then i included whoops i have both of these enabled i included a couple different styles of bangs so we have parted bangs and we just have um straight down bangs which the guides they'll look different here in the viewport but yeah you guys can download that if you're interested i just wanted to kind of show how the reaper is at work here but let's look at a new scene i just want to kind of show you how this works so i'm going to pull in a cube and I'm going to turn off the work plane and I'm going to pull in two different things. I'm going to pull in, go to extensions. I'm going to grab both the Reaper and I'm going to grab Reaper SE. So I'm just going to hide this for now. And then I'm going to go in here and create an empty spline. And I'm going to click on our spline pen and hold down till I get the sketch option. And I'm going to select that. And then I'm going to enable the snapping. So let's also click into the cog wheel here. And I don't want it to be point, I want it to be polygon. And this will enable me to draw on the surface of a mesh objects, like our cube. And then I'm gonna close that and I'm just gonna start drawing because I wanna show you how cool this is. So I'm just gonna draw here and maybe like this. So it looks like a normal spline we've drawn from this angle, but if we start to rotate, you can see it's drawn the spline uh, exactly along the surface of the object, the cube here. And that's because of our, the snapping to the polygons that we enabled. So we can turn that off now and we can call this our base spline. And I'm gonna show you kind of what both of these Reaper objects do. I'm actually going to also pull in the spline wrap and this will just need to go under the SE version. But for now, let's take a look at what happens when we drag our base spline into Reaper 3.2. And we need to enable this. So as you can see, by default, it creates these giant coils. And Reaper is obviously this procedural kind of coil or braid system. So I can control how many coils there are. I can control the amount of strands. I can control the multiply samples and the radius. Um, the distance from the center spline so stuff like this and it's set to coiled rope but I could set this to a three strand braid so if you wanted to create braided objects or rope objects this is a really instant way that you can do that um, but then beyond that if we wanted to use this for like the hair system again we wouldn't create a mesh object like this we'd want to make a spline that we can then reference so this is where the SE version has been really nice so by default we want that on and we're gonna click on the spline wrap because it needs a spline wrap and then we are gonna pull our base spline as the reference for that so now you can see we've got a spline being generated kind of the same thing from before onto that spline we drew on the cube so this time we have less options they've only made it so we have the three strand or the coil for the SE version but I think that's fine and then again you can control the amount of coils the distance and whatnot and all you need. So again, because this is all set up for us, the Reaper itself just needs the spline wrap. We can plug our base spline right into there and it will work right away. So yeah, so that's kind of the nice thing about this is you can literally draw anything, wrap a Reaper spline around it and you're good to go. So if I were then to create a new spline, let's just create an empty spline. I'm gonna go into this view here, my front view. And I'm going to create a new spline using the spline pen. Something like that. <clears throat> okay, so just three points. Go back to our view here. So I've now added the spline to kind of the back of our cube like a tail. I'm going to call this tail just for now. And I'm going to select that top point. I'm going to right click on our tail spline. I'm gonna to go to simulation tags and I'm gonna add the rope belt 
and I'm gonna belt this onto our cube. So drag that into object and then I'm gonna hit set. <clears throat> and you can see it created this little yellow line and red dot on the point we selected. And then I need to actually add the rope tag to that tail as well to say I want this to act like rope. And now if we hit play, you can see our spline now acts like rope. So again, this is a spline. We can plug this spline into the spline wrap. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna go back to our spline wrap and replace the one we had in there with our tail spline. So now if I hit play, you can see now it follows that tail we just created. So this is how I'm making the braids in my hair pack. So this is where like you need the Reaper plugin for those hairs to work. And also you can see that stuff is kind of flipping around at random. And we can just fix that by changing the up vectors here and rotation in the spline wrap. So if I set the Y value to one and the Z value up by one, maybe even two, then that shouldn't be flipping around. So as you can see, we fixed that issue there. That's really how I've been creating braids. And that's how I made this style from my pack and how the braid, uh, how that worked. And that's just really how I added dynamics to the braid in that style. The only other thing I want to show you here is how I actually added um, extra hairs going off the end of the braid, like as if you tied it off, because that's an additional thing here uh, that is worth showing. Let me delete the original Reaper object in the baseline. We don't need that anymore. I'm just going to be working with this tail object that we created. I think we want to rotate this a little bit. Take this 90 degrees because <clears throat> it was facing the wrong way before. Okay, so say we have our object set up here. Let's actually cache our rope too while we're at it. And I'm not going to worry about the fact that we don't have collisions with the cube. You would just add a collider object to the cube to prevent that. Also, I might actually stretch our spline a bit because I think there's too many coils right now. So I could go into the Reaper object and I could lower the coils like this. So it looks like more of a traditional braid, or you could also play with the offset value here, or the from and to values, um, just start extending that. So totally up to you. Let's say we want to add a tail. There's a couple things that you could do. Firstly, in the spline wrap, in the size section, this controls how the braid looks width wise. Um, so if I start taking this tip point down, you can see that we are narrowing the braid as it goes down, which is kind of how a real braid would be. But um, <clears throat> the thing that I kind of found is I could take, I could add a couple of points here and I could do this. So I could fray things out myself um, just by adding these three extra points to the end. So I could do something like that. Or I found that just kind of having uh, one point at the end and kind of narrowing the braid a little bit is fine and maybe we want to adjust this point so it's a little bit more dramatic and then let's add hair to this so i'm gonna with nothing selected i'm gonna go to simulate hair objects add hair and in the guide section i'm going to add our reaper object then i actually just need to change the root from spline vertex to spline 2d and you're gonna see it doesn't exactly follow the shape of the braid yet because it doesn't have enough segments so as i start to increase this it will solve that so maybe around 60 for the the guides and maybe we'll change the segments for the actual hair to like 100 or more we could change that later before we actually look at the render view let's change the viewport to hairlines because i think that will just make things easier so as of right now we've got kind of the the base of our braid going but how would we actually make the tail of our hair so that's going to be in the hair object actually if we go to the hairs section and you go to roots you're going to see we have an offset value and we have an extend value so this will affect one of the ends of your braid and you may have this flipped around by default depending on your reaper or your spline wrap object so i'll show you what i mean so if we go into this extend object and we start increasing this let's say to 10. you're gonna see it actually it did it at the wrong end so it put it down here towards the tips of the hair but it extended that hair out so that is exactly what we want we just want it at the opposite end and the way that i have figured out how to do that is just by going to spline wrap and we just need to flip around the axis so instead of positive x we need to do negative x and then if it gets all funky like that you can just hit go to hair guides editing and reroute 
and now you can see we've got the hairs growing out of the correct end there. <clears throat> but the tail of the hair is still much too thin, so that is where we just go back to the spline wrap and we start tweaking this value here. So we probably actually want this section, this tail, to be pretty wide, and we just need to add back in those other points. So we need to create that kind of, um, that area where a hair tie might be, and then just play with the curves here till you get a, a look that you're happy with. Let's see, and we might need to reroute the hair. Okay, and we can even hide our reaper object and our tail spline while we're working. And this is where like I might think, okay, we need some more guides maybe. And we could also play with the actual width of the reaper itself. So this is where we'd go in with the distance value and start increasing that. We'll need to reroute the hair again. So now we're seeing a better representation of what the hair is looking like. So this is again where we'll go in and adjust our curve in the spline wrap to control that um, that width of the tail at the end there. And you'll you might have to keep playing with the the reroute. Um, so that you can see that update in the viewport live because sometimes it won't and maybe we want to change the hair amount <clears throat> I'll change it to 15,000 because I don't need so many and I might go in to the thickness and change this to Okay, so let's see if that helps at all again. You can keep extending this value uh, however much you'd like in the hairs tab however much you want that tail end of the braid to be totally customizable, which is nice. And then you can always go back and set this distance to like a totally different value and reroute the hair, um, get something a little bit more unique. So, okay, so let's just say we wanted something like that. Um, if you're noticing that the braid is too thin, like it's too exact to the, the spline itself, that's where I would go into the hairs tab, go to cloning and change this root and tip centimeter value to like 0 0.01 and 0 0.01 and then maybe add like a clone or two. Um, that should add some thickness with a slight offset. Um, but if that isn't enough, then, hold on, let me just reroute this to be safe. Then in that case, I think that's where adding some frizz and some other kind of kink values and wave and whatnot, how that can help. So if we just go in and we add some frizz, you can see it's going to add nothing to the ends, but add everything to the tips, which this might be flipped because we did the opposite axis with the spline wrap. So you might have to play around with that a little bit. Um, but we could add this somewhere like that. And then we could even take this amount down. So you're only getting a little bit of frizz here or there, something like that. And you could do the same thing with, you know, displace and wave and clump and all kinds of things. So you can just get really creative once you start playing around with this. And I think this value is actually gonna be flipped too because again, we chose the negative X axis in our spline wrap. So things might be flipped around, so just keep that in mind. Oh, you know what? I think it's because we have dynamics on. So this might be the problem. So let's reroute it. Go back to dynamics. Yep, turn that off. Turn off forces, we don't need that. Um, again, because the rope is controlling the dynamic of the hair, you shouldn't have to have those enabled. So let's try that again. Perfect. Yep, so it's going to go right through the cube because we didn't add a collider. But regardless of that, that is how I have figured out how to create braids in Cinema 4D with the free Reaper plugin. Um, it was a fun journey because I learned how to create my own scripts uh, with ChatGPT, and that's not perfect either. But um, it was kind of nice to go down that route and figure something out and then uh, find a plugin for it as well. So again, I can't take full credit for this, uh, even though I learned how to make my own kind of braid generator. Uh, the Reaper plugin itself is creating the braid splines, uh, and then I'm utilizing that in the, the pack to create my hairstyles. So yeah, this is how you create some braids. Uh, hopefully that is helpful. And I hope you guys have lots of fun creating your own braids for things. So that's all I have for you today. Again, I'm sorry that I sound awful. I just sound like a dude right now because my voice is so low and I've had such a scratchy throat. So hope to be better for the next video. But uh, regardless, hope you all have a wonderful holiday season and I will see you soon. See you in the next video. Bye.